If you're an investor, what do you do next? Jim Rogers is still in Singapore, Vince is still in New York as well, and Steve's down in Canary Wharf. Uh, Jim, with all the liquidity that's uh, been pumped through the system, with the dollar looking like it's a funding currency, institutions are washed with cash, which they seem to be putting to work in both the stock and bond markets. Um, what happens next here in the, in the sort of the short to medium term, if you're an investor? Well, I, I, everybody's been looking at la the last year in Lehman Brothers. That's not much terribly relevant as far as I'm concerned. We should be worrying about the next year or the next two years going forward this weekend. And I'm surprised it hasn't come up on your show. I mean, America pulled out another bout of protectionism against China and the rest of the world. Protectionism is getting worse and worse. I'm terribly worried about it because protectionism led to the Great Depression in the 30s. Everybody is now getting into the act. And if that happens... You see the U.S. dollar already making new lows for the year. And in fact, if it continues to go down, we could have new lows for, for history. In fact, I, I'm not suggesting it will continue to go down, but if it does, we're going to have some serious problems in the currency markets. We're going to have serious problems in the world economy if we see protectionism rising over and over again. So I, I'm worried about a lot of things. Vince pointed out the market's already up 50%. Well, a 50% rise in six or nine months is, is something to worry about. You usually have corrections after that. I think we can also look to the future by looking at the businesses which are still running, the Lehman's businesses themselves. Let's look at Barclays. It's jumped up the league table in the debt markets. It's still got more work to do in the M&A markets and the equity markets because it took hold of what was primarily the good parts of a business, the U.S. distribution channels. Nomura took on the European and Asian operations. It struggled to keep the numbers, but now is hiring aggressively uh, to build that business and increase that franchise. But against those two relatively positive stories, there are still around about 100 Lehman businesses across Europe, which have got a total, and PwC is, is filing these claims at the moment, of $100 billion of claims still to go uh, against that parent company for work undone, for client money, which needs to be repatriated. And these kind of flies in the ointment uh, can be replicated across a whole host of banks and other financials. So there's still a lot of problems there, despite the fact that some of the original Lehman businesses appear to be doing rather well, albeit under different ownership. And Jim, with all your fears, how are you, as an investor, how are you hedging yourself then, Jim? Where are you putting your money if, if, to protect yourself against your fears? Well, I, I've explained on this show many times that I own basically commodities where the fundamentals are getting better. I own the yen, which is one of the few currencies. And I own a few, several foreign currencies, but a, 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 particularly the yen and the Swiss franc because I, I see problems. Uh, I see better, better uh, fundamentals in these er other areas. I don't own very many stocks at all other than in China. And, Vince, and, and by the way, I have no shorts. Thoughts. I'm just saying, for one of the few times in my life, I don't have any shorts. <laughs> um, and, and Vince Farrell, we want to get your final thoughts as well. On this one-year anniversary of Lehman Brothers' failure, as you look forward to that correction you mentioned, where should investors be putting their money, and what do you anticipate moving forward? Well, I think that you ought to be very cautious right now, and a private investor in the United States ought to recognize that sharp advances are usually followed by normal enough corrections. I worry about protectionism, as does Jim. My biggest worry is that the consumer is going to stay not just uh, uh, quiet, but uh, continue to retrench. So I'm much more uh, stock-specific right now. That's my business. I buy, I buy stocks. Uh, I'm somewhat short, but uh, on balance long, because I find valuations more or less reflect the outlook that, that I see uh, uh, in the next year or two. But uh, I own some retailers, believe it or not, because the retailers that I own have very specific value-added propositions to the consumer. I think a couple of the large-cap technology stocks look very attractive because they have a lot of cash on the balance sheet, significant free cash flow, and in a slow-growth environment, if you're looking uh, for some measure of productivity enhancement in order to get some earnings, then I think you'll turn to technology. Longer term, I agree with Jim on the commodity stocks, but right now, for example, I feel oil needs to consolidate its recent gains. There's too right. much inventory in the world. Okay, Jim, we've got about 30 seconds left. I can just ask you for one takeaway from investors from this uh, entire crisis. What's the one lesson that investors can take away with them? What they should do is worry about all the debt developing in the United States and learn how to sell short government bonds because that's the next bubble which is developing. Long-term bonds in the what? United States. Jim Rogers, we want to thank you so much for joining us from Singapore. Vince Farrell, thank you for joining us from New York. And Steve Sedgwick, thank you for joining us from London.